Hey guys, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank, and today we're going to talk about the end of Dark Knight's Death Metal. So, this, the last two issues of Death Metal are pretty by the books. That's why I didn't really see much point in sort of talking about them one after the other. In the separate videos, when it's really just the same event, really just, you know, the last death knell, you know, the, the final charge. Because that is what it is. When we last left off, we found out that Wonder Woman and Lobo were going off to the Forge of Worlds to create a device using Antichrist's energy, created by Lex Luthor. Meanwhile, the rest of everyone else, good guys, bad guys, and between guys, are going to fight off the forces of the, the Batman who laughs Dark Knight. Clearly, this is the most evil being ever. Ever's forces, while that being deals with Perpetua. And the whole time this is happening, what really, who really tells the story of this is Wonder Woman. That makes sense. She starts this story off. She it's revealed that she was the one that sort of screwed the pooch in Justice League when they were when they originally started to fight Perpetua. So yeah, that that's worth looking at. And what's really cool about this fight is what we're seeing is a bunch of people who normally wouldn't join this fight, but because the stakes are so high. They have to. The judges of the multiverse are on their way. And through the course of the story, we see the Batman who laughs, dark as night, he kind of lulls, fights Perpetua. There's a conversation there where Perpetua points out, you know, hey, the, the judges are coming to wipe us all out. You know, you have to help. You have to, you know, let me you know, stop them. And he's like, nah, nah, we ain't doing that. We're just going to create our own, and I'm strong enough to kill them anyway, so, you know, kill you, absorb you. And it's kind of sad, really, when you think of it, because the Batman who laughs slash low slash darkest night has sort of overtaken this story. When's the last time Perpetua mattered to the greater story of this? It, it was Justice League, and that was months ago. Now she's been upstaged by this event. There's, there's a bit of commentary there, too, like, you know... Um, who really remembers the the monitors and the anti monitors? Like, no, people remember the these other characters who create just these one moments, and that really is what death metal is at the end of it, which is sort of like a commentary on Christ. You know, the, the idea of anti crisis and direct crisis energy. Like, you know, um, what a crisis event is is the the DC universe deciding mm, things are getting a bit too complicated here. The characters are getting a bit old too many Robins, too many Kryptonians, let's just reset everything, go back to a simpler time, you know, get rid of this people, get rid of this uh, multiverse, let's bring the multiverse back this time, like, no, there's a lot of dishonesty about the state of the DC Universe, and maybe that comes from the right place, or from a good place at least, but this entire event is about owning up to it, owning up to the fact that, hey, a change needs to happen, we have to become who we really are, we have to face the truth. And that's why Diana is sort of the spearhead of this. And there's not much to it, really. There's some really great moments. Uh, we get some great um, narration from Batman and Superman about, you know, what they're going through. The fact that, you know, they're dead. Or dying, in Superman's case, dead in Batman's case. And we see their interactions with their rogues galleries a bit. And their family. And is there a lot here? No, there's more like subtext. There's more... It's, it's hard to find the exact words you want to use here. This event is just... These last two issues are just sort of like, hey, who's going to win this? You know, Perpetua already lost. Turns out she was never a player. And that that's sad, despite how important she was. It comes down to Wonder Woman versus... The Batman who lulls slash laughs slash darkest night slash clearly the most evil being an abomination. You know, it's it's those two. And, you know, even when the judges begin to appear, it's like, look, you're not going to be able to handle this. You can't face the truth. Like, some of you are going to die. If you, if you, you know, put this multiverse on the right track, where it should be, a lot of people might die. Love might not be there. Dan even looks for it, and she almost hesitates again, but she realizes she has to face it, has to face that reality. And she's even willing to save the judges from the darkest night Batman who laughs, lulls, you know, you know, probably punches kittens is the Joker slash Batman, probably everything you don't like about the DC Universe altogether in one. 
And when it's all said and done, the judges do show up. And there's a really cool moment, actually before that, a really cool moment, when um, the Robin Groblin King shows up. You know, he's been he's been fighting Batman's team, heroes and villains, and he even cuts off Batman's arm. He's like, hey, so what are you going to do? I want you to say that. I want you to say it. Say I'm Batman one more time. Like, because, you know, no one says like, he was like, you know, I would like to say it, but you see, I've met a lot of versions of me, and you're kind of the dumbest one. Did you really think I'd keep my black lantern ring on my hand? Turns out he keeps it in his chest. I'm like, yeah, that's actually kind of smart. And it's even cooler because every time you see him use the ring, he he raises his hand. So he's still that long con. And it turns out, yeah, this was really busted from the have the ring. It's the middle of a war. So guess what? Your guys are now my guys. And also, Alfred's here. And they're all like, let's beat this guy up. And at the end of it all, when Diana defeats the darkest knight who lulls Batman, evil, Joker, fusion, hybrid, 3000 attack, uh, special ability thing, um, everything is sort of quiet for a moment. And Diana's met by the judges who take the form of Wonder Woman, or a Wonder Woman, and talks about how, you know, we're going to spare this multiverse because of what you guys have done. You know, you've decided, knowing full well what would happen, you saved us, and we're going to give you another chance. You know, we're going to reset everything. You know, maybe barriers and closed off um, walls aren't for you guys, but there's going to be some changes, and there's going to be a cost to pay. Diana's totally willing to pay this cost, but like, no, no, you're just going to watch over things. And that's really how the book comes to an end. So the question is, is Death Metal worth it? Death Metal is a series that's that has a lot of great moments, but overall wasn't that great a story. It took a lot of time to sort of tell a much simpler story. Like, there's at least about 20 issues in this entire event. And only seven of those were part of the main story. A lot of this was just attempts to explore the Dark Multiverse. But we already have Tales of the Dark Multiverse of that, which I think tells a better story of that. The fact that certain things that I think people would have found more interesting were not explored, like the the daughter of Batman and Wonder Woman was never explored. Certain things we didn't really care about. Like there's another universe where the fear toxin is like weaponized to its fullest and only black people have a resistance to it because they live in fear. I, I hate that trope, by the way. I hate it. And it, it, it's sort of what happens if you give Scott Snyder too many toys and too much pull for a book. Usually that's a great thing. Like, he really nailed it with um, Dark Knight's Metal. But Death Metal, I think it's because Death Metal led to something. Dark Knight's Metal leads to something that he doesn't really have much of a hand in. Or, like, much of a direction. Like, it leads to Future State and then Infinite Frontier, from what I'm hearing. So, Snyder's not in any of those. I'm not saying he doesn't care. But because he has to set up all this, from what I heard, Death Metal was supposed to be a much smaller story. Was this a good event? It was all right. It was all right. Um, for what it was setting out to do, I think we could have toned it down a bit. Because, again, seven issues, and we're looking at, what, 11 tie-ins. 11 tie-in issues. Were all these mandatory? <laughs> no, definitely not. Some of these were just, this is a fun idea to talk about, let's talk about it. It would probably be better in the trade. From what I heard, Death Metal was better in the trade. Anyway, with that in mind, this brings me to a close here. If you're into the bucket of thinking, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, check out some other videos, and I'll catch you all later. This is the bucket of think tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm your fandom.